Hey everyone, I've been geeking out on Godly website lately, my latest go-to for some web inspiration. Let me tell you it's like a gold mine for web designers. While deep diving into its treasures, I bumped into Philip and Tony's piece. But here's the twist. It seemed to build on WebGL. And to me, WebGL feels like decoding alien hieroglyphs. So being the resourceful and slightly lazy person I am, I tapped into JavaScript one more time to recreate it. I'm thrilled to share my rendition with you all. It might not be as spectacular as Philip's work, but with just a few lines of JavaScript, I'd say it's pretty decent. In this tutorial, we'll craft this interactive mouse move effect. Let's get to it. Diving into the HTML. I've pre-linked the style sheet and script files, so we're set there. Let's kick things off with a container. Inside, we'll pop in two main elements, a div with a class name indicator and a gallery. Within the gallery, we will add a div named gallery item that holds the image. Simply clone this div for as many images as you'd like, remembering to update the image file name. And there we have our foundation. Let's move on to styling. We'll kick things off by selecting all elements. We'll strip away any default margins and paddings, and set the box sizing to border box for consistent sizing throughout our design. Moving on to our HTML and body, we're stretching them to cover the entire viewport. We'll also apply a background color. And to keep things neat, we're preventing any overflow. Now, onto our container. We're positioning it absolutely, and using a neat trick to center it perfectly within the viewport. We've assigned a fixed width of 1000 pixels and some margins and padding for spacing. Lastly, we're using flex to ensure the container's content is nicely centered. Next, we'll style the indicator. We're positioning it absolutely at the top left corner. It's designed as a small white dot with a width and height of 5 pixels each. The border radius ensures it's perfectly round. Plus, we've added a transition to make its movements and changes smooth, using a unique cubic bezier curve for some animation flair. Turning our attention to the gallery, we're setting it up as a flex container. We'll space its children items evenly with justify content space around. We've given it a full width and hidden any potential overflow to keep everything neat and tidy. For each gallery item, we're employing a flex display again, centering its content both vertically and horizontally. These items have a flexible basis of 20 pixels and a fixed height of 400 pixels. We've set a tiny margin on the sides for spacing and given them a solid black background. To keep their content well contained, we've hidden the overflow. Lastly, a smooth transition effect is in place for the flex property, using that signature cubic bezier curve for a touch of animation elegance. Diving into the images within gallery item, we're setting a width of 400 pixels and letting them occupy the full height of their container. Using object fit contain ensures our images maintain their aspect ratios without getting cropped. We will also add more scale using transform, making sure that they are filled in entire available space. Alright, time to dive into the JavaScript. First up, we're grabbing references to our gallery container, the individual gallery items within, and the indicator. We'll also set two constants to control the flex values of our gallery items. Default item flex will be our go-to for the standard look, while hover item flex will dictate how an item stretches when hover. Next, we're creating the update gallery items function. This nifty piece of code loops through each gallery item and checks if it's being hovered on. If it is, we'll use the hover item flex value, otherwise, we'll revert to our default. After setting up the function, we're simulating a hover state for the first gallery item and calling update gallery items to see our hover effect in action. We're looping through each gallery item and attaching a mouse enter event listener. When a particular item is hovered over, we'll loop again through all gallery items. Here's the fun part. We'll set the isHovered property to true only for the item that matches our hovered item. All other items will have isHovered set to false. Once that's done, we'll call our update gallery items function to refresh the styles. This ensures that only one item expands at a time. And here's where things get even cooler. We're adding a mouse move event listener to the gallery container. As the mouse moves, we dynamically adjust the position of our indicator. Using the client X property and some bounding rectangle magic, we're making sure our indicator follows the cursor's X position within the container. So, as you glide your mouse, the indicator will smoothly slide along. A touch of finesse to our gallery. And there you have it, 
a slick mouse move effect right on your page. I hope you found this tutorial enlightening. If you are hungry for the source code, dive into the link in the description below. For the cost of your morning latte, you can get exclusive access to source codes from all tutorials, plus fresh website templates every month. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.